Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. In this video, we're going to be talking about aspect ratios and in particularly in regards to projection screens. One of the things when you're building a home theater that you're going to need to decide is what aspect ratio screen are you going to go with. And in this video, I'm going to share with you kind of my thought process of why I went with a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio for my setup and hopefully give you some better understanding of which aspect ratio might be best for your setup. Now, before we jump into the video, I wanna share with you two quick things. Number one, don't forget, we still have about two weeks left in the giveaway for the Valencia Verona theater seat. So if you're interested in entering that, at the end of this video, I'll provide a link down in the description below. You can head over to youthmanreviews.com slash giveaway to get entered into that. And the other thing I wanna say is a huge, huge thank you to all of my patrons. My patrons allow me the ability to produce additional content apart from the YouTube platform that gives you kind of behind the scenes, gives you access to discounted items that I'm selling. Sometimes when I upgrade uh, my theater equipment, I'll list those to my patrons first. And so if those are some things that you might be interested, you can join me on Patreon for as little as two bucks a month and be able to have access to all kinds of other content. So if you're interested in becoming a patron, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash youth man. All right, so before I jump into why I went with a 2.35 to 1, I want to take you back 13 years ago when I first began to kind of dream and visualize what I was wanting to do here in my theater room. We purchased our home. It was about two months from being finished. And so it was already a, a, a new construction home, but it wasn't finished yet. And this room here is a 13 foot by 19 foot by 10 foot. It was called a quote media room on the floor plan. The room is just a rectangular room. There's no closet in here. It has a double sliding glass door over to uh, this side to my right. And then up here at the top left, there is a kind of an elongated window um, that I've since blocked off with um, some fabric and also even a two by four to prevent, prevent any light from coming in through that window. And at that time, 13 years ago, a 55 inch TV was kind of like, that was a good size TV. It was kind of like the equivalent of today's 75 inch, you know, that's a big TV. And so I remember going to like walmart.com and I, and I looked up the, just a, a standard TV, 55 inch TV. And I looked up the, the dimensions of it, height, width. And so I measured that out and on my wall, on my front wall, I took some blue masking tape and I drew a rectangular the size of that 55 inch. And so I moved to the back of my room and looked down this 19 foot room and I saw this little bitty 55 inch image and I was like, ah, oh, that's never going to be this big movie theater experience that I wanna have in my theater room. And so I began the journey of looking at the possibility of doing a projection system in my theater room. And I knew that was gonna cost a lot more than a, a TV would, but, but I knew that if I was wanting to get that big movie cinematic experience in my room, I was going to have to go to projection. And so one of the first things when you're building a theater room that you need to kind of figure out is what aspect ratio are you going to use? And so I'm gonna break it down and just kind of make it really, really simple. Most TVs are in what they call 16 by nine. Sometimes they call it widescreen. Um, they called it widescreen because even before that we had the four by three TVs that were almost square. And so by making it rectangular, that was quote widescreen at that time. But the easiest way to kind of think about a 16 by nine aspect ratio, just to make it really, really simple, is for every 16 units wide, it's nine units tall. So let's take that in inches. If you had a TV that was nine inches tall, it's gonna be 16 inches wide, okay? And so when you're thinking about wider aspect ratios, like my room, I have a 2.35 to one aspect ratio. That means for every one inch high, it's over twice the width. So for every one inch high, it's 2.35 inches wide. So to scale that up, you could think of it in feet. 
So for every one foot high, it's now 2.35 feet wide. And so that just kind of gives you an idea of what those numbers mean. So when I began thinking of, you know, what do I want to accomplish in my theater room? Everybody at that time had a 16 by 9 TV. And so I wanted something that was going to be different than the experience that I would or a friend would or a family member would get when they're watching, you know, a, a movie at home on their 16 by 9 screen. And the other thing that I realized with a wider format, you're actually getting more information in the picture. I don't know if they still do it today, but I know um, many years ago uh, when you were watching a movie on TV, it would say something like, um, it would have a little disclaimer at the bottom and it would say, this picture has been modified to fit your TV or something like that. Basically what they had to do is the movie might have been shot in a wider format. So for the rest of this video, I'm just going to refer to that really wide format as scope. Now keep in mind, the original scope I think was 2.66 to 1, but it's pretty common for most guys to refer to anything wider than 16 by 9 as either cinescope or scope format. So just keep that in mind. It's not the original scope, but to me it still, for the most part, it still brings the same concept. So when I was thinking through, you know, what I want for my setup, number one, I wanted to replicate what you would experience at the movie theater. And so typically at the movie theater, you've got this massive wide screen. It's wider than 16 by nine because most movies are shot in that wide cinescope format. And so with most Blu-ray movies and 4K movies, um, a lot of those are in those wider formats. They're in 2.35 to one or 2.39 to one or 2.4 to one. And so if you were to have a 16 by nine screen, and you were to play a wider format movie, a 2.35, a 2.40 to 1 ratio movie, you're going to get gray bars or black bars above and below that image. And so you'll see this all the time when you're watching a movie on your TV, unless you've changed the setting in there that kind of zooms in so that you hide those gray bars, but then that's gonna crop off some of the sides to make that image fit. And so as I begin to think through, okay, which format would be better for me, the really wide format or 16 by nine, I had to think through, and this is something important for you, you need to think through what content will you be consuming in your room? And here's what I mean. Most sports are shot in 16 by nine format. And so if you're uh, going to be watching a lot of sports. Maybe you've got a, a theater room that's kind of like a multi-purpose room, like a friend of mine. He's got an incredible setup, but he watches a lot of sports in his room. And so he actually decided to go with a 16 by 9 screen, even though he does a lot of movie watching. So that works out really great for his setup. Um, if you're doing a lot of gaming, gaming typically will be in, once again, 16 by 9 format. Now sometimes the cut scenes will change to 2.35 and so you'll see the gray bars up on the top and on the bottom, but for the most part the movie, the actual gameplay is in 16 by 9. And so when I had to think about my consumption and my media consumption, I watch zero sports. I mean we're talking none. I don't watch any sports and I rarely, rarely, rarely play video games. Now I love playing video games, I just don't have a lot of time for them. Um, having a home business and website development, as well as you know trying to provide two or three or even four videos a week for you guys here on the YouTube platform, I just don't have time um, trying to build those two businesses um, and to be able to play games. So I don't do very many games and so when I looked at it, for my setup and in my room and my media consumption, 2.35 to 1 was the only option for me. And so I want to say this, is there a better format? Is, you know, 16 by 9 better than 2.35? I don't think so. Um, I think it comes down to your preference, to your media consumption, and what you want to accomplish in your room. As I mentioned, Sean in his setup, he does a lot of, um, watching of uh, sports. And so in his setup, he still gets a pretty large cinescope screen. 
Um, not quite as big as mine, of course. Mine's 13 feet wide, but his is just taller, you know? And so he just got a, a, a better setup for the type of media that he consumes. Now, one thing that you're gonna need to consider, if you go with the Cinescope screen, what, what happens when you watch something that is in 16 by nine format? And so for me, if I were to um, set this up to watch as a 2.351, set my projector to that size, if I were to watch something that was 16 by nine, the um, image is now going to extend above and below my screen. So it's gonna get cropped off. And so you need a way that you can actually change between those formats, between the widescreen and the scope screen, um, 16 by nine to, to that wider 2.35, 2.40, or whatever to one ratio. And for me, what has worked out really, really great is a feature called lens memory. And I won't go into a detail uh, because I do have a video specifically on what is lens memory, how does that work? Um, I'll leave a link right up here in the card above to that video. Check it out after you watch this. Um, it's a good video and it'll just kind of show you what are some features built into some projectors. Not all projectors have lens memory, but it, it, it's what I call the poor man's anamorphic lens uh, or poor, poor man's anamorphic setup because um, to do it the proper way, you're going to need to buy a anamorphic lens, which a lot of times is more expensive than your projector or as expensive as your projector. Um, so you can Google what an anamorphic lens is and how that works. Um, but it's just, honestly, it's just way too expensive for me and for my setup. The lens memory has worked great. In a nutshell, you're zooming in um, and refocusing and just setting that as a preset. So check out that video sometime. Uh, it'll it'll kind of walk you through that as what uh, lens memory does and how that works in my setup. And so my advice, if you're looking to do a projection in your room, the first question is just think through what type of media do you consume? If you are like, like me, I probably watch 90%, maybe even 95% of the content that I watch in this room is in that wider format. It makes no sense for me to go with a 16 by nine screen at all. I mean, zero. I love, love, love having this massively wide image right in front of me. Because in my room, previous to this 150 inch diagonal screen, I had a 103 inch diagonal screen. And I always felt when I was watching a movie that I was looking at the movie. I never felt like I was immersed into the movie. So by having this scope screen, and especially being, it's about, I think it's 12 feet wide, 150 inches diagonal, um, I get this incredibly immersive experience. Um, I'm sitting nine feet from it, and so, uh, and I even did a video on that, but basically, um, THX recommends you're supposed to be like 15 feet back from 150. I'll be honest, that's crazy. Um, there's no reason um, not to go with 150 inch. Um, now, most guys may want to be like at 10 foot or maybe even 11 foot, maybe 12 foot. Um, I'm perfectly fine with nine feet from 150 inch diagonal. It's gorgeous, it's immersive, it's not too wide that I feel like I'm going, I can't see everything. I can see it in my peripheral. Um, everything looks great, I love it. Um, and I've never had one person come in my theater room and go, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm sitting on the front row. Um, but again, that's another preference. You gotta kind of figure out your seating distance from that. But once you determine how much content, like what percentage of widescreen and what percentage of scope content you're gonna be viewing, I think that'll help you determine which format is going to be best in your setup. So over the last 13 years, my home theater has had just enormous amount of changes. Um, I've gone from a 103 inch screen to a 150 inch screen. I've gone through multiple uh, subwoofers from the Klipsch RSW15s to dual SVS PB16s and now a pair of JTR Captivator RS2s. I've replaced uh, theater seating because they were getting wore out uh, over you know using them for 13 years. I've added Dolby Atmos. I've replaced pretty much all of my components um, as technology has changed and as uh, you know, formats have evolved, 
But over the past 13 years, there was one brand that I've never owned, but man, I always wanted that. It was like, in the back of my mind, I was like, one day, I'm gonna have that in my home theater. I just didn't know when that would, was gonna happen. And so over the past year, I have been busting my butt and working extremely hard to try to make that a reality. And just two days ago, it arrived here at my home. And so over the next couple of days and couple of weeks, we are going to have a huge upgrade here in my home theater. So if you're interested in finding out what that upgrade is going to be in my home theater, click this video right here. We're gonna do a complete unboxing and a brief overview of the product. And I hope you guys have a great week and we'll catch you in the next video.